way of focusing on the restoration of engines and what is involved in getting and keeping vehicles like this on the road, we'll be looking at Len's engineering life. The story of one of the standout figures in the steam engine restoration movement over the past 50 years. Now although he's a Yorkshireman, Wolverhampton has been his home for so long that not only does he have the accent, he can now honestly be called a true black country engineer. Following Len and Jane gave us a good reason to visit some of the biggest steam events in the rally year. The Shrewsbury Steam Rally, the Great Dorset Steam Fair, the Bedford Steam Rally, but also some more intimate gatherings, such as at the Bonded Warehouse Weekend in Stourbridge, which we would otherwise not even have known about. And as a measure of Len's standing in the restoration movement, he also organises events as well as just attending. In particular, as a staunch black country man, he has for many years organised the Steam Weekend at the Black Country Living Museum, representing one of the major events in their calendar. For this, his many friends need little encouragement to bring their engines along to the steam gathering in a great setting. And whilst most of his activity is now concentrated on his full-size engines, the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Kimber and West Midlands Society of Model Engineers, which his club amalgamated with, saw them being recognised by being asked to speak about the club alongside other notable characters such as Pete Waterman, who as well as being recognised as the very famous music impresario, is a great advocate of steam restoration and a promoter of getting engineering in general re-established in 21st century Britain. West Midlands and Wolverhampton in particular was and still is a centre for engineering and manufacture. Just along the road from where Len and Jane live now is what used to be the John Thompson Works, where since the late 19th century, amongst other things, heavy boilers were manufactured. For lifting, moving and delivering the boilers, they had a Fowler crane engine, a Super Lion, which by the 60s was no longer used. And then Len came on the scene. And uh, uh, I did that, I worked on it for six months. Had the belly tanks off for a new bottom in the tanks. Uh, went right through it, had the pistons out, everything. Uh, just checked all the bearings. And uh, we actually pulled it out of the yard just six months from buying it. And we lit the fire and steamed it. And drove it home from there. The chap who was steering with me, Alan Baker actually, he's got his engine, own engine these days. And uh, he, he steered it, he never steered one before. 
and we went for a run for about two, three miles and drove it home eventually, we got it back home with it. And that was it, we got our, our own steam engine at home. You know, 41 years now, I've had it. With its connection to John Thompson's, providing a link to the Black Country's working heritage, Len and the Super Lion were soon a regular feature of all the local steam rallies and events. And so onto the story of Endurance, a powerful Burrell Showman's engine, number 2457, which had been built in 1903 as a road locomotive designed to pull and run elements of a fun fair around the country. But after a full life hauling and providing the electricity to light and run showground rides, she had been left languishing for years in a farmyard in Somerset, slowly rusting away. So eventually, Lem went to have a look at it. You know, and off I went out this door, back door, and there it was. There was old cars, motorbikes, um, lorries and cars, all in broken down state. And right up the corner was this old engine. No cover on it, no nothing, been there 30 odd years. And it was a hell of a state, as you can appreciate. Uh, anyway, I had a look, look around it as best I could. Uh, couldn't get in the firebox, of course, because the so much rubbish underneath it and all that. So he eventually uh, came to me and said, what do you think about it? And I said, oh, it's all there and it's all complete, but it's a lot of state. Well, we see it is. He said, but um, he said it'll repair, won't it? I said, oh, it'll repair, all right. I said, but blimey. And uh, anyway, we went back in and had a cup of tea. I'd got all my pals there, they were all gone, they all came and uh, we hooked it all up and pulled it and shoved it and did all what went to it. And you'll see on the, um, the actual entrance where we've got to pull it out of, onto the road, onto the main road, uh, he's drawn... Uh, to him that uh, we could do is, and we pulled the, hooked the engine up, winched it and pulled it and shoved it and pulled it outside and uh, finished up uh, then pushing it back onto the low loader, which was the other side of the wall, of course. Slowly, endurance was brought back to life, with testing and refining at each stage. This is her first test run, filmed by Bridget in May 2010. Finally, and most importantly, Len completed the repainting so that when she is now seen out on the road or at the rally ground, it is as she was when first produced 110 years ago.
Over the decades, Len, Jane, and their many friends and helpers have brought four engines back from the brink of decay and eventual destruction, which can now be seen around the country each year. And this contribution to the restoration and steam movement has not gone unrecognised. There have been many official awards and presentations in recognition of the important role played by Len over the years. This plaque is on the inside wall of the Bratch pumping station. Prince Michael of Kent presented both Len and Jane. I started this by saying there are many great characters in the steam restoration movement and that is true but Len stands out as someone who has brought his down-to-earth engineering skill, perseverance, determination, humour and attention to the details of everything he has done. His mark is on his engines and long may they stay that way. 